today's video we are going to be going head to head with a pro sony camera and the new iphone 13 pro i'm using the sony a7 III. we are going to shoot some of the exact same images and some of the exact same videos on both of these and then see if you guys can spot the difference between the two as well as doing some general tests to see the main differences between these today's video is sponsored by skillshare which is an online learning platform and we're going to be talking about them a little bit more later on in this video the first shot we're going to take is just like a landscape style one over here i'm going to be using the widest lens on the iphone 13 pro which works out to 13 millimeters unfortunately my widest lens on here is 17 millimeters but we're going to try and match them up as best as we can so let's shoot a photo next we're going to do the same thing but shoot a video clip on each one of these at 120 frames per second at 1080p so you're going to get a good idea of the stabilization in this as well because I am suspecting that it's going to be way better on the iPhone. But let's punch in through like this. Okay, the next one, we're going to be testing the medium lens on here. So we're going to be getting a shot of the mountain, like through these palm trees. The medium lens on here is 26 millimeters. So I can match that perfectly on this camera. We're just going to get one photo, one like sliding video out and then we'll show you guys later and see if you can see which one is which. Ah! <laughs> so next up, I'm gonna shoot the zoomed in lens. So we got 75 on my long lens, I swapped it over, and then on the iPhone, it's gonna be 77 millimeter equivalent. So they're gonna be very, very similar. I'm gonna just shoot kind of the landscape down there. And I'm gonna do a nice little like slide video to the side like that. We're gonna shoot the waves crashing up on the rocks there, one photo. And then we're also gonna do a slow motion video because one advantage this does have is higher frame rates and resolutions over my a7 III. For the sake of keeping them the same, I'm gonna shoot 1080 at 120 frames per second on both of them slow it down and get that wave like smashing up there it's going to look super cool oh that's a huge wave dude i'm gonna get wet something really cool on the iphone 13 is that it has cinematic mode in video which basically means you can get that shallow depth of field and like the blurry background but it's artificially done and having a real camera you can do that by having a fast aperture on your lens so we're gonna get a shot of me, actually Jason's gonna do it, and we're gonna put the cinematic mode on here, and we're gonna shoot this lens wide open at its shallowest and see how they look next to each other and how they compare to the real shallow depth of field and like a artificial, an artificially generated shallow depth of field. One of the biggest differences I've noticed with these is that I can just put this in my pocket and I need to keep carrying this one around, like even when I'm skating and stuff, but that's a whole different story. We're gonna head back to the studio and we're going to actually start looking at all of these different images and see if you guys can spot the difference. Let's head out. We are back in studio. I've had some time to go over the footage and photos to see how big the difference really is. And now I want to show you guys and see if you can actually see the difference between these things. And if you can, what the actual main differences are. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare and I think no matter what setup you guys are shooting on, whether it's a professional camera or something like a mobile phone, having a good understanding of the craft that you're interested in doing is gonna far surpass the importance of the gear that you might have access to or be using. So Skillshare is an online learning community platform with so many different valuable courses made by other people that are masters of the thing that you might be interested in. That can be things like videography and photography, but they also have things for almost any interest that you might have outside of this genre itself. The guys over at Skillshare have hooked us up with the first 1,000 people getting a month completely free on Skillshare. If you use the link down in my description, otherwise the code SEANKITCHING on checkout. They really are amazing if you guys are interested in pursuing any further knowledge on any of your interests and really mastering a skill like videography or photography. So go and check them out. Let's take a look at these videos and photos with our first one being the push forward video shot of the banister. Now these were filmed in slow motion just to give a better feeling, but there are a couple differences I can see right off the bat. Let's see if you guys can see the differences.
Okay, could you guys see a difference? The correct answer is the Sony Pro camera was on the left of the screen and the iPhone was on the right. To me, there are a couple really big differences, one of them being the stability. The iPhone stability is just so locked off, especially in something like this where it's shooting at a higher frame rate and using that slow motion. It's like perfectly smooth as if you were shooting on a gimbal, which is amazing. And if you watch the Sony camera shots, there is a little bit of movement, even though I was doing my best to keep it as stable as I possibly could, there is inevitably just a little bit of jerks and shakes like that. I can see another really big difference in this, but I'm not gonna tell it to you guys just yet because I think it might give away a lot of the next videos that you guys are gonna look at. Next, let's take a look at one of our images, which was of the like palm tree, the building and the mountain in the background. You guys can see it right here. The photos are obviously gonna be a little bit harder to tell because they are just more similar and there's less giveaways than the video clips. The Sony camera for that one was on the left again and the iPhone was on the right. Did any of you guys get that correct? For me, the main differences with this one is that there's just a little bit more of a sharpness on the iPhone image and because the iPhone has that artificial HDR giving us a much higher dynamic range, that for me are the main differences and I don't think that you would have any problems shooting on an iPhone for photos especially, you can get some really amazing content. Let's jump straight into our next image, and that's gonna be the image that we took on the long lens of the iPhone, matching it on the Sony a7 III with our 75 millimeter lens. And it's this photo of looking over the bay past this one like little outcrop of houses and to the mountain in the background. And if we pop them both up on the screen here, let's see if you guys can see the difference. For that one, the iPhone was on the left and the Sony was on the right. This one is really close in my opinion. There isn't anything too significantly different between these two images. The main thing I think is just that some of the highlights are a lot brighter in the iPhone image and we almost have a more even exposure across the Sony camera, which is kind of different to the previous ones. But I think because this one is actually a more evenly exposed image, the iPhone almost overcompensates and brightens up some of those highlights. It's also a lot more detail in the clouds on the iPhone because of the higher dynamic range, even though those highlights are a bit blown out, which is kind of interesting. It's definitely some like artificial dynamic range stuff that's coming into effect there. But once again, I think these both look really nice. One of the biggest other differences is that even though this is on a long lens, it wasn't taken in the portrait mode. So it doesn't have the shallow depth of field that the Sony does. And if you look at those rocks in the foreground, they're kind of like a little bit blurry. And then that background is nice and crisp, whereas the iPhone image, kind of everything is just quite crispy and in focus. So you can get around that by shooting in portrait, but I wanted to do it this way just to see what the difference would actually be. Next one, let's take a look at our long lens video clip of the rocks and the mountain in the background. Could you guys see a difference in that one? The Sony was on the right hand side and the iPhone was on the left. The main thing again for this one is just the shake in that handheld footage on the Sony camera. But something I do prefer on the Sony camera is that if you look at the rocks in our foreground, they are a little bit thrown out of focus, giving it less attention to the viewer. So you kind of drawn to look further on in that image instead of looking at those rocks right in the foreground. Whereas if you look at the iPhone image, those rocks right in the front are so crisp and clear and also rarely bright because of that even exposure that your eyes are more drawn to those rocks than really the background and that mountain. So for me, that's not as nice. It looks over sharpened and everything is just so in focus. For our slow motion video of the waves, let's take a little look and see if you guys can see the difference. For this one, the Sony camera was on the right and the iPhone was on the left. For me, the main differences here are that we were kind of looking into the light for this. So the Sony camera has a lot of blown out highlights, especially if you look towards the right top of the frame where the sun is. The sky has lost a lot of its detail because of all those white clouds. And if you look at the iPhone one, it's done its artificial HDR style thing, which has kept a lot of that detail in the clouds. And if we were to color grade both these and push them, you can see that the iPhone retains more detail up in that sky where the sun is, and it kind of just introduces a little like yellow flare over there, rather than the Sony camera, which is just like a white out and blown out highlight style. 
image. For our last video, it's just a shot that Jason got of me. I just wanted to show a face and everything. For this one, the main takeaway was that we put the iPhone 13 into cinematic mode. The iPhone 13 is the first phone that allows you to do that like shallow depth of field, fake blurry background thing, but for video, so we thought it would be cool to get a shot of a person and actually show how realistic it really looks. So let's take a look between the two. Okay, so for this one, the Sony was on the right hand side. You can see the difference in this one, but I would also like to just point out how crazy it is that you can get a blurred out shot like this on a cell phone and comparatively to the Sony, yes, it might not be as amazing, it struggles with the hair and like some other fine details like that. But the fact that you can do this on a phone is pretty crazy and it really makes me think of what future phones are gonna be capable of doing with the artificial altering of the image rather than just capturing something real. It is really sharp and looks really nice. The foreground of the bag is thrown out perfectly and then that background is super nice and blurry. It really does look amazing. This is surprisingly like, a really satisfying shot and I think to use the cinematic mode on iPhone 13 is gonna be a game changer for any of you guys only shooting on mobile this is gonna help you make your shots look way way more professional if you just keep in mind that you need to be careful of things like hair those are gonna be all of the images and videos that we are looking at I hope you guys thought this was interesting and it gave you a different perspective of how different a mobile phone and a professional setup can actually be to each other I think my key takeaways for this are that anything that you guys have, if you're using it correctly, you can get a really nice result. Phones are going crazy these days and the iPhone 13 is such a capable camera if you are using it in the correct ways. And if you guys do want to master your skills anymore, hop over onto Skillshare and you can hone in on that. You can even do mobile videography courses on there as well as just normal filmmaking and photography courses or anything else that you guys might be interested in. I think a lot of people assumed that the really expensive Sony professional camera would just blow the phone out of the water and that is not the case. There is a lot of things that the iPhone is actually doing a lot better than the Sony camera, like the image stabilization, arguably the dynamic range. I hope you guys found this useful. Remember to sign up for Skillshare with the link in the description or using code Sean Kitching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.